In this video, we will see about uh, design of a gear pump. Now, first we will go with the introduction. Now, the gear pump it is using the meshing of a two gears to pump fluid by displacement. Now, there is one of the most common types of pumps for hydraulic fluid power applications. The gear pumps are widely used in the chemical industry to pump high viscosity fluids. The gear pumps are positive displacement pump or it is also called as fixed displacement because they always pump the constant amount of fluid for each revolution. So, where these gear pumps are found? Now, it is used in car soil pump. It is used in hydrodynamically driven lawn care equipment, some hydro hydraulically driven log splitters, splitters, hydraulic power units and metering application. So wherever we have a viscous fluid that we need to pump out from one particular point to the another one, so we use the gear pumps. Next. How we can distinguish between the centrifugal pump and a gear pump? Now, if we check for the gear pump, it is known as positive displacement pump. Means what? It always gives a particular or a constant quantity of a liquid that is going to be pumped out. Now, in case of a centrifugal pump, if we compare it, it is a rotodynamic pump and it does not necessarily deliver the fixed quantity of liquid this is important here we don't have any fixed quantity of liquid which is pumped but here in case of a gear pump we do have a fixed quantity of a liquid now next uh, of regarding pump during working of this pump if the delivery valve is closed then the casing may burst as a result hence the safety walls are provided in the gear pump now, as it is always delivering the fixed quantity, so it will block in that, and because of that, there may be chance that the casing may burst. So that is why we use safety wall without fail here. Now, in case of a, a centrifugal pump, during wor working of a centrifugal pump, it is not necessary that delivery valve is closed, but there is no risk of excessive pressure development because it is going to move inside it only. Now, third point. This is a low discharge and high pressure pump in case of a gear pump and this is high discharge pump in case of a centrifugal pump. So comparatively, the centrifugal pump gives you higher discharge. Now, in case of a gear pump, this is used for highest viscosity, high viscosity liquid. Now, maybe work for the low viscosity also, but main purpose of it is to use for higher viscosity, higher viscosity or liquid. Now, in case of centrifugal pump, this is used for low viscosity fluids only. Now, in case of a gear pump, the priming is not required at all because it will create a negative pressure itself. Now, in case of centrifugal, we do need a priming. So, these are few main important parameters. Those are going to be distinguished between centrifugal pump and gear pump. Now, in this chapter, in this video, we will see about the gear pump first and then we will go with the centrifugal pump. Now, as you can see, there are two types of a gear pump. Number one, it's internal gear pump and external gear pump. So, as you can see, as this is internal gear pump, so the basic design, this is one gear and this is the smaller is other gear. So, this is internal gear. And this is the stationary part. This is stable part. And the second one is external gear pump, which is this. So this is external gear. Now first we will focus on internal gear pump. So this is internal gear pump as we have already discussed it. So this is the ring gear, the outer gear, this is the inner gear. And this is the stable part or stationary part. And this inner gear, it is connected to a shaft. And this is the remaining is the casing part. 
so here suppose if we we'll take example from any one of it from here liquid will come in and it will go out or it will it may be reversed also as per the direction of the internal gear so this is regarding in, uh, internal gear pump now how this works now it can be designed or it can be defined in four phases number one is this the liquid is entering second one the liquid is entered already and it is moved inside the gap between the gears third one that liquid is entered and the gap is filled with the liquid so as you can see it here the gap is filled with the liquid and it is moving up and the fourth one so as the gap is filling because of this internal gear it will the gap will filled and it will force this liquid to move out in other direction so as it is moving in this direction only so there is only one method that this liquid will circulate in this fashion only there is no chance of coming in this one so that is why here the gear internal gear pump or a gear pump always gives you a constant discharge now what are the advantages of it advantages of an internal gear pump that it has only two moving parts and one stopping box now it has non pulsating discharge means constant discharge second excellent for high viscosity fluids and constant and even discharge regardless of pressure conditions operates well in either direction so these were few advantages of it now let's move to the disadvantages that it usually requires a moderate speed of a motor now it has a limitation of pressure that it is medium pressure limitation now again next one is that one bearing runs in the product pump overhang load on the shaft bearing so this was the disadvantages of uh, internal gear pump now next we are going to discuss about the external gear pump now for external gear pump again we need two gears so this is gear 1 this is gear 2 so as it is external gear pump those are in contact externally and this part this part is a casing part so this is the casing part as you can see here we have out inlet and at this end we have outlet so the thing is if we check it how this viscous fluid moves now it will come here first and then with these the spaces between it it will go in this direction and then it will be forced to move here in between it we have some seals so that liquid which is moving upwards it should not go downwards and should not mix with this inlet pump so we will see it's working in detail how it works so this is just the internal structure now if we check for its rotations so as per the rotations it will change the direction so as you can see here if these are this gear is moving in clockwise direction so it will move in anti clockwise simply if this is the inlet then this will be outlet so if we we'll reverse it the above the upper gear it is moving in anti clockwise so this will move in clockwise and it will reverse it so this is regarding counter clockwise rotation and clockwise rotation of the gear external gear and with this it will change the inlet and outlet also so how exactly it works we will see in this now here suppose this is the phase 1 now here it is taking turn in clockwise direction so of course this will move in anti clockwise direction so here we have two seals so that there won't be any liquid which is moving directly to this or it is not coming back also so this blue colored part it is inlet and this is we have outlet so in the first phase the liquid is just entered in the second phase it is going between the spaces of the gear so these are the spaces so similar like a internal gear so it will move in spaces as the gears are moving and this is the casing part so it will move continuously in this fashion so it will move continuously in this fashion and after that it will force to move out to the outlet so this is the working of a gear pump 